This morning, I was just thinking of a few verses I wanted to share. I don't have much to say, but... <laughs> Romans eight sixteen says, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. That's how we know that we're saved. When we believe the death, burial, and resurrection, we have the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Verse 15, it says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, I have a father. So we have no more fear, have not received the spirit of bondage again. Then it also says, For, in verse 14, For as many as were led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now, are you led by the Spirit? You know, salvation is not of works. The Bible is clear on that. You know, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man boast. But then in verse 10 it says, For we are his workmanship. Whose workmanship is that? It says his workmanship. So you are his workmanship. And he saved you free from works. But then it says it created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. We must keep... And I think there are a lot of confusion a lot of times. We always must remember that don't confuse salvation with your walk with the Lord afterwards. You have to keep those separated. So many people want to confu- you know, com- put them together, then, then it brings confusion. We are saved not of works, but then after that, we are the Lord's. We are his workmanship, and he wants us to do good works. Yes. Philippians 2.13 says, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So it's God that works in you. Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights of the world. The blameless is the judgment sheet of Christ. But we are also told not to quench the spirit. So I guess we should just ask ourselves, are we quenching the spirit? Are we letting God, are we walking after spirit and letting God work through us to do his work? Romans 8, 28 says, And we know that all the things together for good to them that love God. And to them that are called according to his purpose. So, I just want to share that a little bit. To encourage someone to walk after the Spirit. Nothing else matters. Well, hello everyone. Um, I'm going to start with a quote from Martha. Well, we have uh, started a small mailing ministry. Well, she did, pretty much, but. Um, so I just wanted to talk about that a little bit. I'll start with a quote from Martha. She said, <clears throat> my thoughts are constantly on how we can help our children and other Amish people see the truth. Getting memes out there has been on my mind for a year or so. I kept trying to think of ways to get them to our children and our people, the Amish, so they can see them. I thought of the local papers, but then just decided to print them out and mail them for myself. We don't know if they are looking at them or not. I don't know, she said, I don't know much about computers, so I'm very thankful to all her Facebook friends who do such a good job creating them. So, she told me the other day, she says, I'm not going up there to speak. She's like, she wants no recognition for what she's doing. But I told her that all the praise and glory goes to Jesus Christ. We're just being ambassadors. 
And he needs more ambassadors. An ambassador, in case someone doesn't really know what an ambassador is, an ambassador is someone that represents their home country in, in a foreign country. So for us believers, our home is in heaven. We're in a foreign country representing our home country. So that's what an ambassador is. And we need more people to stand tall for Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter what people think. It doesn't matter what they say. Only Jesus Christ matters. So we are using social media to help spread the gospel. Um, we all know that the Amish shun modern technology. They call it of the devil. But the Bible says, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. But God hath chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. You know, they think they're wise by not having it. But And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base the things of the world and things which are despised. They despise it. Hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to, to naught the things that are. This says that God used the foolish and despised things to confound the wise. He takes the wise in their own craftiness. They despise technology, but now they have the same things that are on social media in their own homes. Not everyone enjoys memes, but to us it's another way we can help to use to spread the gospel. You know, the Amish might not have social media, but they have a mailbox. It's a great way to reach them when they are in the comfort of their own homes, not being pressured. And that is why I think that's what's so important about the Amish voice that Joe puts out. It's because it, it's, it's right inside their homes. They can sit on their lazy chair or boy or whatever, a couch, and, and they, they can just look at it. You know, because you know how it is sometimes when people talk to you, you're just like, you just want to back away and... And you don't want to be confronted, basically. Well, here, it's, it's right here. The Word of God, you know. A lot of our people can understand, not just our people, but a lot of people in general. Not, it doesn't work the same for everybody, but a lot of people can understand better with a picture or little drawings or whatever. Our, our goal is to keep, keep it simple, simple as possible. You know, maybe a little picture with one or two verses or something like that. Sometimes a little bit more for in case there's anybody, any believers among them. Not give a long text to read. A number one top priority for us is to make sure that every issue has the, the simple gospel of the grace of God in it. Not no workspace mixed up stuff. The pure gospel of the grace of God in there that's number one priority that's very important to us how many times a lot of times when you read ministry articles there's no mention whatsoever of the gospel or, or it's you know you, you don't even know what you read when you're done with it and we don't we try to make it as to where people can can definitely get get the pure gospel out of it oh we found out that you do not need a new building to do ministry in either uh, we just recently moved into this, to a small house where there's no room yet. We are doing ministry work. Um, oh, I got this slide here. Yeah, it's on. Okay. That's our ministry table in the living room. <laughs> it's set up right there. You got to walk around it, you know, but it. It is. It serves its purpose. That's where she does all most of her work on it. And then this is the, whoops. This is just a small, simple printer that we're using. Nothing fancy. It's just, it doesn't cost a lot of money to do this. 
And then this is a label printer because writing them out by hand is, it gets a little monotonous after a while. And then this is the uh, batch that's ready to be mailed. That's how we do We just get them ready to mail and we just mail them. And Martha says it's addicting and she'd like to send more out, but we only have limited resources. So we have brought copies of what we have already sent out for examples out there on the table for anyone who wants to look at them or, or whatever. They're out there on the table. And she, there's a couple of binders out there where she, there's a lot of pages in the binder you can look at that for future issues that she's going to be sending out. They're all also out there on the table. You know, so for anyone that's interested, if you have any loved ones and you would like for them to be put on our mailing list, just let us know. Make sure we have the address. Give us the address. We'll send them something. So, but many people, that's all I'm going to speak about on that. I just want to, I just want to close with this. Uh, you know, one thing that I've noticed is uh, many people wonder what the will of God is. Well, the Bible tells you. I'll show you a very important one. Oops. First Timothy 2.1. Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. That's God's will. That's one of his wills. He wants everybody. It says all men. It doesn't say only certain or some. It says all. And then the next verse is, for, for there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. There is no other person between you and God, and he wants everybody to be saved. Jesus shed his blood on that cross he did pay for all your sins and, and mine. And if you've never trusted Christ's sacrifice for your sin, then today is the day of salvation. Yes. Acknowledge that you are in a sinner in need of salvation, that the only means by that which you can be saved is to put your faith into what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross when he shed his blood. When you do, you will be translated from darkness into his marvelous light. Yes, and we will spend eternity with him and other fellow believers. Hallelujah. Folks, it doesn't get any better than that. Amen. Nothing else matters. Okay, that's it. Hey, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. How are you guys doing? You guys enjoying Step Out of the Boat 2024? Oh, come on. You guys can do better than that. You guys enjoying Step Out of the Boat 2024? Yes. Awesome. Hey, my name is Tyler Dick, and my wife's name is Justice Dick, and we have been given the privilege, and I mean privilege, to give supervision over your children. So I have unfortunately not been able to be much a part of this, but I have really, gotten a, uh, really been able to spend some time with your children. But I had to sneak up for a couple minutes to be able to share about one of the newer ministries that come from MAP, and that's Growing in Christ Academy. Okay, so Growing in Christ Academy, what it is, it's a Bible school that Joe kind of pulled me into when I came here a couple months ago, so it's relatively new. But what it is, it's an online school that's kind of catered towards former Amish people who have come out of the Amish, want to know more about the Bible, and want to learn more about how to share their faith, how to grow as a disciple in Christ. Really, it can pretty much be summed up in the name Growing in Christ Academy. Now, if you're hearing you're not Amish, that doesn't mean that you can't be a part of it, okay? We have other people who are here that are not Amish. Uh, we have a awesome lady named Carol who's a part of it right now, but we're kind of in the beginning stages of it. But as someone who is currently in online school right now through Liberty University, I can say the way that we set it up was intended to be very similar 
to what an online college that's like through an accredited university would be like. So what that looks like is we have a discussion board where every week uh, we'll try to get discussions in there where we can kind of type in what we're learning. We'll have a certain scripture in focus. Okay, so whatever that is for that week, we're going to be focused on that. And it really depends what course you're going through, okay, because each course is different lengths. It can be like 12 to 14 weeks. Uh, my friend Jonas can share a little bit more about that, but we also on our, have weekly Zoom calls where all of us will kind of try to come together at a time that works for us all and be able to just discuss what we're learning, okay? And it's a wonderful thing. We want to equip people who are new believers or maybe you're um, a believer who's been a believer for a while but you want to continue to grow. It's not just for new people. Anyone can join, okay? But my friend Jonas here, He's the one who has done a lot of the creation of the websites. He has put his heart and soul into this. So he's the one who can kind of give a little bit of insight into what goes into each of the courses and tell you how to sign up. Jonas, would you mind sharing that with them? Thank you. Yeah, it's a really exciting thing. Um, and the, there will be a, a slide up there in just a minute with uh, the different courses uh, that we have now or are working on. Um, and a, as you see... Uh, as you, the, the other slide was just a, a kind of a, a brief image of uh, what it looks like inside the course. Uh, a video teaching, uh, scripture reading, uh, a lot of them have a little quiz in there as well. Um, and, and don't get hung up on the, the quiz uh, and the discussion. Even though I know for most people that's the most challenging, the quizzes are not designed to pass fail. The quizzes are part of the learning uh, and as long as you, because you can just go in and, and retake them until, you know, it looks good to you. Um, the the uh, model that we're going for is um, the idea, it's, it's the, the uh, how Jesus uh, showed us a, a very effective model of teaching. If you look at, uh, let's say, uh, Peter. Uh, when he called Peter, Peter was where? Fishing, on a boat. Uh, he was not in the synagogue where the, the learning took place. Uh, and, and yeah, for, for the most part, we would say he, he started following Jesus as an uneducated person. Uh, and I mean, no, no stigma against him whatsoever. That was just the, the reality. He, he was a working person. Um, but he walked with Jesus for three years, uh, and at the end of those three years, uh, he became one of the, the primary leaders of, of the, the New Testament church. And at the end of the three years, he was not an uneducated person. He was a person who had already been in ministry, had already been walking with Jesus, uh, working in, in this ministry for three years. Um, the the uh, Amish actually have a very similar model, and it's one of the reasons why Amish businesses are so successful, and a lot of businesses are trying to figure this out, but we know it already. And it's the, the apprenticeship model where you have a person who has the experience, has the knowledge, will bring in others to, to help, and as you are doing... Um, you're learning also. I mean, I, I used to work on a carpenter crew. Uh, and, and I mean, I, I was getting good at it. If I have, would have kept on a few more years, I would have probably been able to go off on my own and continue. And, and the, the reason was I, I was learning. Uh, the, the, the goal for me going to work was not to learn how to build a house. The goal was to build a house. And as we were building the, these houses, I was learning how to do it as well. And this is exactly what we want. Uh, the, the goal is not for you to sit and learn uh, how to do ministry, how to work, in, how to live a Christian life, how to uh, serve uh, Jesus in, in, in this capacity. It's not you you're sitting and learning for all these years and then say, Okay, yeah, you, now you're good, go do it. No, the, the idea is for a person, wherever you're at, um, to be able to start taking some courses, 
uh, to learn and, uh, and we'll walk with you. Um, to, as uh, you're learning, you're already doing, and by the time you get through the courses, you'll have a, a much better understanding, you'll have m m many more uh, tools in your belt uh, and be equipped to, to uh, continue on and also uh, you know, start the cycle over where you'll now be bringing people in and helping them um, learn these things too. So that, that's, that's the, the idea behind it. And it's not designed for pass-fail. It's designed for learning as you go. And if you can put on the, the, the next slide there, um, we have the, the uh, one course is, is a dynamic Christian spirituality. And it, it's, um, it's more than the basics of the faith. It, it's a, a really well-rounded foundation of what it means to follow Jesus and how to live it out practically in your everyday life. So it's a really uh, awesome course. I, I, I really love it. And then we have another um, prayer, uh, prayer foundations that's really focused on helping to understand that prayer is about relationship, a very intimate relationship with God. Uh, and if you think of John 17, where Jesus is praying, and we get that very intimate glimpse into uh, Jesus talking uh, with his Father. Um, and he says, I want these people to be in unity with you, just as you and I are in unity. So that, that's the idea behind the, the prayer course, is, is to help us develop the, this uh, understanding uh, of uh, intimate relationship and how, how to live that out in our lives. And then a couple more that, that we're working on, uh, New Testament, Old Testament, to help give context uh, to the, the New Testament, or to, to the Bible, to, to where we can understand that the context that it was written in help us to, to gain more insights into the, the reasons uh, for the writings. Uh, to, because, I mean, we, we all know that, that each culture speaks in their own language. Each culture has so many things that are just assumed, and we, we, don't, we do it, we don't even think about it. Uh, so to, to help understand the, those assumptions, to, to help understand what the writer was saying in the context that, that it was said in. And then, of course, going into the, the teachings of the New Testament, the teachings that, that Jesus taught as well. Uh, so that, that's just a, a little glimpse. There'll be more uh, courses coming on as well. Uh, we, we're planning one for uh, parenting, which... Um, I would be very glad to, to take that one as well. And I know many of us would because we're having to learn as we're going. Um, and I can't, I know we have uh, more planned too, but I'm kind of blanking on them right now. But uh, there, there's a table out back with uh, brochures on them. You can pick one up. I'll be sitting there uh, by my computer and I can uh, answer any questions that you have or give you a glimpse inside the, the courses that we have. And also in, in this uh, book that you have, there's the information uh, towards the back. There, there's the uh, information on how to find it. But yeah. Feel free to, to give us uh, uh, your contact if you want to. We, we, we can talk more if you have more questions. Sign up um, if you're interested. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, uh, yeah, how do I say this? Just take a moment and think where you're at right now. And ask yourself, is this where I want to stay? Is this where I want to be? Because as you hear these stories of stepping out of the boat, it, it gives us a longing and, and the courage to do so. And so as you're thinking of stepping out of the boat, and I know God has put a calling on probably every one of us, 
we will gladly walk with you, help equip you, and get you to where God is calling you. And together, in unity, us, the, the Trinity, uh, we, we can do this. We can, and, and the, go, the goal is not to uh, teach you how to build the kingdom. The goal is for us collectively to build the kingdom. And as we're doing it, we're learning how to do it as well. Um, but we have somebody that has a little bit of experience uh, in uh, walking with God uh, and also going through uh, these courses now. So I want to welcome Levi up and give him the chance to, to share a little bit about his experience uh, in it. All right, I don't know why I agreed to this, but here I am. Uh, so as most of you know, I was here two years ago. And this morning when I walked in here, I said, if I could come back here and trans, you know, go back to two years, there's a lot of things I would change. And one of the things that I would say to myself um, is that salvation is in Christ alone. The Word of God and the Word of God and the Word of God. Not man's interpretation, but the Word of God. Um, recently, I heard a, a quote from a pastor friend of mine, Paul Washer. A lot of you may know him. You yeah. might not agree with all everything he says. Not necessarily saying I do, but um, just a little quote. Um, somebody said, to Paul, I don't like the way you um, interpreted that scripture. And Paul says, I didn't interpret it, I just read it. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, my heart goes out to all of us, anyone who has stepped out of any religion, culture, especially Amish, Mennonite, whatever it may be. I think we are very susceptible to following false teaching, false doctrine, the first new bus that comes down the street, um, things like that. And I have been, I have fallen prey to some of those. And over the last two years, Joe could tell you, I have called him many times, I had questions. And I'm gonna say Joe did not give me answers he showed me in scripture and I look up to Joe and people like that um, people mature into faith um, and that is that is my goal today um, is just to anyone listening um, test everything that you hear by the word of God Go to prayer, let the Holy Spirit lead and guide you into all truth. The Word says that He will, and He will. Um, I don't wanna talk too long. I guess I already talked longer than I thought I would, but, and that's how I got invited onto this Plowman's course, or the, uh, yeah, the Plowman's Academy. And I, I really like it. It's. It's very um, informative. It's, it's informal so far as it doesn't make you uncomfortable with what you do know or what you don't know. It, it's, not, it's not something where you have to feel bad if you don't know. It's a place where all of us learn together. Just like Jonah's presented here, I really liked his presentation. Uh, the picture that you get, you know, of a of a young person maybe carrying two by fours into the house and maybe one that's a little further along and they're cutting them and someone else in charge of the building. Um, and as we progress, we can teach the guy bringing in the lumber how to, you know, he goes, he goes through what we've been through and our goal is to grow together. And so that's my goal, and Jonas asked if I would speak a little bit on the, the Plowman's Academy, and 
I would say it's, it's been a great help to me. I'm excited for it. I think it's a great way to reach out to our people and to, uh, to teach them to come alongside each other and walk together in following the Lord Jesus. I think that's all I have. That's Thank all right. You. So if you have any questions... Thank you. So if you guys have any questions, I may be stuck down in the children's ministry, but if Jonas is at the table, you can ask him. If you see me during dinner, feel free to come ask me questions. We can help you sign up if it's something that you may be interested. So Thank you very much. I'm just really blessed by being here. God is on the move. God is moving and calling men and women from every stream of life Something is going on. God is up to something, and people know it. A lot of them know that something is going on, but they don't know just what. And it's including the Amish community, but not only that. And I spoke recently among, uh, with some, some friends in a group down in Wayne County. They left the Amish about two years ago have a, just a really nice church going. And I was invited to speak there. And one of the things that I challenged them on, I said, are you going to be satisfied to be happy ex Amish, F them under the bishop's thumb, or are you going to pursue Jesus? Is this church going to be a parking spot for happy ex Amish, or is it going to be a launching pad yeah. for you to move on in your walk with Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. And I sense that's the spirit of these events. Amanda's testimony touched me deeply because for 50 years, almost 60 years, I've been passionate about 2 Corinthians 3.18. We are being transformed into the image of Christ. And it has driven me in my own walk. It has shaped my life in a major way, as well as my pastoral ministry and our time in Africa teaching in the churches and all that I've been about. It's that transformation process. It's that vision of pressing on with Jesus. And we're in a day when God is calling people in a particular way, calling us out to follow him. I've got several books back here on the table the first two are fresh off the press. I just got them last week. An Invitation into the Good Life. And it's just, it's for personal inspiration or group study. And it is, um, it's just describing the abundant life and how we can enter into the abundant life. Because I believe that God has richness, fullness in the spirit, spiritual realm. The thing that made the Garden of Eden so rich was the personal interaction between God and man. And that the Spirit of God nurturing, ministering to the Spirit within man. That has been restored. There's still thistles and there's still pain in childbirth. But the essential component of the Garden of Eden was the intimacy between God and man, and that is for us, and that makes life good. So that's what the, this one is about. Many, many, many scripture references, dozens and dozens of them. And in the back, every scripture is printed out in the back because I want people, I know that a lot of people are not gonna go get their Bible. I want them to read the book, look at the scripture and see if it says what I say it says. The other, the second one, bookends a truth that matters. All through history has been God saying, I want to make life good for you, and man saying, ah, we got this, God, we can do it our way. That began in the garden where man was offered the opportunity to become as a God, knowing good from evil, and to decide for himself instead of listening to God. Book ends. Genesis to Revelation is the story of God saying, I want to make life good for you, but you have to do it my way. Obedience matters. Genesis to Revelation, 
Obedience matters. That's what this book is about. But this is a biblical and Anabaptist vision for the Matthew 16, 18 church of the 21st century, inviting us into the Holy Spirit empowered, abundant life and fruitful service of the kingdom of God on the earth. And I believe that the cultural and spiritual traits of our Anabaptist foreparents, forebears, that led to their spiritual vitality to live or die for Jesus, those cultural traits and the traits of integrity and diligence and all that, we are taking today, we in the Anabaptist community, few communities have prospered as much as the Anabaptist community, Amish and Mennonite. We have taken those traits that produce spiritual vitality in the 1500s, and we have taken them to achieve earthly wealth. We have perverted the basic traits that made our forebearers strong spiritually, and we have taken them to gain earthly wealth. This book will be hard to read without a response. Some will love it, and some will say, you're out of your mind. It's a call to be who we say we are. And I encourage you to give it a shot. These books are priced in a way that, and, and my friends are buying them 10, 20, 50 at a time to give to their friends. And I dare you to try that. Restless Teens, I wrote some, man, I think, 08, after observing three generations of Stolzfuses, myself, my sons, and my grandchildren, and then a whole, whole lot other. It is normal and healthy for teens to be restless as they are seeking to find their own identity and their own place in the family, the church, and society. And we make rules and we are inconsistent in going by those same rules ourselves. And I believe that so, so many of the youth that turn away from the church turn away because of our shallowness and hypocrisy, not turning away from God, but they're turning away from us. This is a challenge to us in how to communicate with kids and how to communicate values and so on in a way that they can embrace those values and become godly men and women. Um, then when in our time in Africa, we were there half time in the uh, 1990s, three months here, three there, three here, three there, back and forth. And God blessed me with a wife who was a part of all that. She's now with Jesus, but she was such a partner. And, and we just back and forth. One of the workbooks that I wrote is more like Jesus, 2 Corinthians 3.18. But we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as from the Lord the Spirit. The word transformed is a word from which it is the word metamorphosis, a caterpillar becoming a butterfly. That's us being transformed. I have never been felt closer, more intimate with Jesus than I do today. And I have never felt more strongly called to become more like Jesus. It's a vision, it's a way of approaching life, it's a way of approaching spirituality. It's pressing in, knowing that righteousness, peace, and joy is the good life. That's where the good life really, really is. And that comes through being conformed, being aligned with Christ and walking in his way and saying yes to him. Obedience matters. So this is 12 lessons, 12 steps. I don't use big words. It's 12 steps and it was very effective in the church in Africa and it's been very effective here. I have very a few of them, but they're, they're back there on the table. The true worshipers is based on John 4, 23 and 4. Time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit and the worshipers must worship him in spirit and truth. And this is a book 
to, it's, it, it is a book to read, but with discussion questions at the end of the chapter on what it means to worship the Father in spirit and truth. And then you can pick out one of these sheets that just describes all of those books. And I invite you to come check them out, get what you like, and my address is in there, and when we all go home, you can contact me and buy some more. God bless you. Amen. He's worthy. Amen. Thing I appreciate appreciate about Ray Burkholder is he he's a scripture man. You ever notice that? Like we're in a texting group, and uh, we don't get any commentary hardly, but we get a lot of scripture every almost daily. He'll send out scripture. And uh, I love that about you, Ray. The Bible speaks for itself. Amen. Um, well, I'm going to take just a couple minutes. Uh, Maddie, can you get the picture up there? This is kind of off the cuff. Now, we're going to travel to Nigeria. Uh, but this happened a week ago or a little over a week ago, and I, I, I just thought, man, if I get a little moment here, I'd like to share it. But uh, about two years ago, uh, I got to kind of connect with this Nigerian, Boomba is his name. Um, we had a couple Nigerians uh, or a family of Nigerians living with us for a whole year. We gave them a place to live. By the way, my wife sits up front here, if you don't know my wife, Esther. And uh, so their rent was to pray, and they prayed. That was their rent. Every, every day they prayed for Joe and Esther. And they let us know. And it, they were powerful prayers. And we appreciated that. Um, but in that process, I got to know Boomba. And then we had to step out of the boat conference. And I felt led to uh, use the, by the way, uh, the ministry uh, that we are going to support. You can put money in those buckets. That's what we did for Boomba two years ago. And um, because of that, we were able to print over 5,000 copies of the ABCs for Christian Growth, Bible study books, in Nigeria. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. But off and on, I've had an opportunity or was invited by Bomba to do a Zoom call with Nigerians, and not just Nigeria, it's now in many other countries as well. But they all come on in their basements, they're sitting down there in their little um, brick basements and out in the front lawn, and it's, it's absolutely amazing to be on this Zoom call. There's sometimes 20, 30, 40, I mean, you can't even see how many there are. And, um, and I get to speak to them because they've graduated from what they call it the Plowman's Academy, the ABCs for Christian Growth. And um, about a week and a half ago, Bumba invites me, said, hey, you want to you wanna, you wanna preach to some prisoners? And I said, man, I don't have time. And um, he, he kept coming back. He goes, you want to preach to these guys, even if it's 10 minutes? I said, okay. Saturday morning, I will get up very, very early because of the time, and I will preach for 10 minutes. But as it got closer, I thought, I got to do better than that. And so I got a, a, a message together on faith in action, faith in action. And I just uh, got on a Zoom call. And there were all these people signing in from everywhere. But that picture right there, is, those are prisoners. And they're Muslims. And I preached my heart out for 35 to 40 minutes. I just preached my heart out on faith in action. And wouldn't you know it, Manasseh comes in here on Sunday morning. And he said, you're not going to believe this, Joe. But the top Muslim guy, the guy that leads all the heads up all the Muslims, got saved after you preached your message. And I was like, "Are you serious?" He goes, "Yes, he's he's he 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 got saved and he has changed." And uh, I don't know. I just I was like, I haven't really shared it with anybody, but I wanted to share it with you guys. And uh, can you go to the next pictures now? So the Plumman's Academy is really the ABCs for Christian growth. We, 
we have taken hundreds of Amish and former Amish. We have students all over the country that are going through these, this course. But we got Boomba started, and, and, and one day I said, you know, uh, we raised about 2,500 bucks. We got 500 of them courses printed up, and... Um, I said, now he's ready to take more through these courses, and we don't have any money, and Boomba needs money, and this guy just said, well, how much does he need? And, and the guy just pretty much pulled his billfold out and handed me $6,000, and he said, can you make sure this gets to Boomba so he can print thousand or a, a, um, a thousand more courses? And these are, these are some of the pictures that you see uh, he just takes them everywhere, all over the place. And Maddie, you can just kind of go through there. Uh, see those uh, covers that it came up with? There are hundreds and hundreds of these, over 500 graduates. And he told me the other day, he said, there are so many people wanting to go through the Plowman's Academy. And he said, we have no money and we need to print more lessons Will you pray? And I feel a little bit helpless, but I, I'm just like, Lord, somebody, um, it'd be so awesome to send this guy because they are on fire for God. And they, they just to see these graduates, and this is, this is like a, uh, it's taken us, what, Esther, at least 15 months that we have had this group. We got one more lesson to go. And by the way, when we're done, we're, we have a missions trip planned for Germany. Our little group is headed for Germany. This is going to be like the last cherry on top of the ice cream. Uh, we've had so much fun together going through all the doctrines of the faith. But that's what these guys are doing. They're going through the doctrines of the faith. And my challenge to them was, and our little group all along is, when we get done, we're not a church. You're going to take this book. You're going to go find somebody else and disciple them. And you're going to encourage them to go disciple somebody else. And that's how we're supposed to do it. Uh, so, anyways, that's my little spiel. I just wanted to share it with you. Come on up, Samuel. It was telling me. Some places you'll never go Till you step out on faith Don't fear the wind or the rain Jesus caught you now go Others might think you're insane Just climb out 